Welcome to this YSL Report Builder 2016 tutorial. In this video, we'll take a quick look at how to create shared data sources and shared data sets. We'll begin with a quick recap of creating embedded data sources in a single report, and then show how similar a process it is to, cre to create a shared data source in the web portal. We'll show you how you can then reference that shared data source in a new report. And we'll also use the shared data source to create a shared data set in the web portal. Again, we'll explain how you can reference that shared data set in a new report. And we'll finish the video with a quick look at how you can edit a shared data set and how to refresh the fields in a new report. So let's get started. To get started, I've created a brand new blank report in Report Builder, and I've connected to a report server called SQL 2016 Training. In Internet Explorer, I've navigated to the homepage of the web portal for that instance of reporting services. And I've also made sure I've got access to a version of the YSL Movies database. So I've installed a copy of the Movies database in a SQL server called SQL 2016 Training. If you're not sure how to get to this stage, then you may need to revisit some of the previous videos. So we have a playlist for Report Builder. You can learn how to connect to a report server and view the reporting services web portal from part three. You can also learn how to install the YSL Movies database using a separate video from a separate playlist. And I'll make sure we post a link to the script needed to create the Movies database in the description below this video as well. So assuming that you know how to get to this stage, let's get started by creating a quick embedded data source. We learned how to create an embedded data source in the previous part of this series, and we learned that an embedded data source was one that was only available to the report in which it's created. Let's have a quick reminder of how those work. If I right click data sources and choose add data source, I can then give the data source a name. I'll call it movies embedded. And then we need to make sure that we use a connection embedded in my report. I can choose what connection type I'm going to use. It's going to be Microsoft SQL Server, of course. And if I know how to type in a connection string, which uh, I, I do, but it's a bit tedious to do so, I could type it in into this box. It's slightly easier to build it using the build tool. So let's click the build button. We can type in the server name, which I know is uh, SQL 2016 training. Um, I've typed in a full stop followed by a backslash there just to point to my local machine or local server, local host. I can then use the drop down list at the bottom to select the movies database. If you're not sure what your server name is, again, just referring back to previous videos, you can find out your server name in the SQL Server Management Studio tool once you've connected to it. So here's the name of the server that I'm connecting to. Once I've entered the server name and the name of the database, I can test the connection just to prove that it's going to work. Click OK, click OK again. There's my connection string built. Click OK one more time and there's my embedded data source. I can now use this data source to create data sets if I need to. So I could right click on the data source and choose add data set to create one. I'm not going to do that right now. The fact that I've created an embedded data source is enough to demonstrate the principle. Embedded data sources aren't too difficult to create, but it is tedious to have to create the same data source for every new report you build. Rather than doing that, you can create a shared data source that you can reference from every new report. To do that, let's head into the web portal. If I navigate back to Internet Explorer, you don't have to use Internet Explorer. It's just the one that I happen to, to go for. From the home page of the web portal, you can choose to create new items. So from the new button at the top, I can choose to create a new data source. Now I can fill in the details for the data source I want to create. Let's call this one Movies Shared. And we can provide an optional description, which I'm not going to bother doing, and make sure that the data source is enabled. Again, I'm going to connect to a Microsoft SQL Server, just as we did earlier. And then I have the same little text box to enter the connection string. Now, unfortunately, in the web portal, I don't get a handy little build button. So I do either have to type in the connection string from scratch, or if you already have an embedded data source which has the correct connection string, you can simply switch back to Report Builder, double click on your embedded data source, copy the connection string from the text box, cancel from that dialog, head back to the web portal, paste the connection string in. Now, there is one small change we'll need to make here. 
If I scroll downwards and just choose to test the connection by clicking this button, I'll be warned that it couldn't connect to that data source. The reason is for a, a fin funny little feature of the, uh, the backslash character. In Report Builder, the backslash character is doubled up to make sure that the backslash isn't treated as an escape sequence by the tool which interprets that string of text. Um, if you don't know what that means, do not worry about it. All you need to know is that wherever you see a double backslash in the web portal, you simply need to take one of them away to make sure it's a single backslash character. Click the test connection button again and you should see connected successfully. This is, of course, assuming that you have the correct credentials. So I'm using my Windows credentials to connect to my server. I can then click the Create button and my new shared data source should appear on the home page. If not, you can always feel free just to refresh the home page of the web portal to make sure that your shared data source eventually appears. Now that we've created the shared data source, we can make use of it in any reports in Report Builder. So let's head back to our blank report and let's right click the data sources folder again and choose to add a data source. This time I'll call the data source Movies Shared. It doesn't have to have the same name as our shared data source on the web portal, but it makes sense, I think, to call this one Movies Shared. We'll choose to use a shared connection and then we can click the browse button at the bottom of the dialog box to navigate to our connected report server. So here we are, we're looking at the same report server that we're connected to. There's my single shared data source called Movie Shared. I can select it and click open or just double click on it. And then making sure that I have actually selected that shared data source before I click OK, there is my new shared data source connecting to the one that I've just created on the web portal. The advantage of having the shared data source, of course, is that whenever I create a new report, I can simply reference the existing one. So let's just demonstrate that with a quick file new, and I'm not going to bother saving the original report. I'll create a brand new blank report. No data source is available currently, so let's create a new one. I'll right click, add a data source. Because I've already used this report, or sorry, this shared data source recently, it's in the list. So all I need to do is select it, maybe give it a sensible name, movies shared, and then click OK. So from this point onwards, I don't have to go through those initial steps to set up the connection string and make the connection or make the data source available to all my reports. It will already always be there. From this point on, I can use my reference to the shared data source just as though it was an embedded data source. So I can right click on it and I can choose to add a data set which uses it. I can give the data set a sensible name. Let's call it, let's just call it films. I can then either type in my query into the query box or even better than that, if I'm not sure how to write a query, I can click the query designer tool. Then I can simply select from a list of tables and views and store procedures from the movies database. Let's just select some basic things from the film table, title, release date, Oscar wins maybe. I can then click OK, click OK again, and there's my data set available ready to create a report. In the same way that it can be annoying to have to create the same data source frequently, it's also annoying to have to build the same data set time after time for each new report you create. If you find that most of your reports use the same set of data, you can also create a shared data set in the web portal. Let's head back to the web portal homepage and then use the new button to create a new data set. When I do this, there's no designer tool available in the web portal. So what happens is the web portal attempts to open up Report Builder. I'm going to choose to allow that and I'll get a little warning in the background, but it will still open up Report Builder for me. But it's a limited version of Report Builder. It doesn't give me access to create a report. It's purely for designing a data set. A shared data set must use a reference to a shared data source. So if I hadn't already done this, I would have to create a new one. I'm going to select the existing data source that I've created. So I'm going to double click on my movies shared and then I can just build up my data set in the usual way. Let's expand the tables folder and let's start with the film table. I'm going to include some common fields I might use. So title, release date, runtime minutes, budget, box office, Oscar nominations and Oscar wins. 
I might also choose to include some values from, from some other tables. So maybe the genre from the genre table and maybe the studio from the studio table. I can build as complex a data set as I like. Let's just do one more quick thing. Let's add a filter so that I only see the Oscar winning films. I can add a filter to the filters section and then I can change the field that's being used to Oscar wins, change the operator to more than and then type in a value of zero. I can then check the results of the report or check the results of the data set at least by running the query, make sure that the results look reasonably sensible, and then all I need to do is save it. So let's click the save button, choose a sensible location, which I think the most sensible location is the server or the, uh, the report server that I'm connected to. Let's give it a sensible name as well. Let's call it Oscar winning films click the save button and then I can close down this instance of report builder, close down the message that tells me it was being opened in the background and then I can refresh the web portal homepage and I should see this time that I get a new shared data set called Oscar winning films that is now available to build reports with. Let's head back to Report Builder and see how we can use this new shared data set to build a report. One of the great things about shared data sets is that because they contain the connection information to a shared data source, you don't actually need to create one in the report itself. To demonstrate that, let's head to the File menu and choose New, and we won't bother saving the changes to the original report here, and then just create a brand new blank report. So without even creating a data source in this report, I can right click on the data sets folder and choose to add a data set. I can tell it to use a shared data set. So let's call it Oscar winners. And then we can click the browse button to browse to our report server. We only have one available shared data set, Oscar winning films. So let's select that one, click open, make sure it's selected in the list and then click OK. And there we go, immediately we get access to all of the fields that we put into that shared data sets query. If you decided that you wanted to change anything about a shared data set, you'll need to do that from the web portal as well. So let's head back to the reporting services web portal. We can modify the data set by using the ellipsis button in the top right hand corner. So if I click on that, I can choose to edit it in Report Builder. Again, I need to allow that application to open and it'll tell me that it's opening up Report Builder for me. Again, it's this limited version of Report Builder that just allows me to edit the data set. Let's include a couple of extra columns. Maybe let's include the certificate column from the certificate table and maybe the full name column from the director table. I can then save this report or sorry, save this data set again, close down this instance of Report Builder, close down the uh, the extra window that tells me that Report Builder is being opened. And then if I switched back to the report that I was working on, I can right click on the data set and choose to view its properties. And then I can choose to refresh its fields with the refresh fields button. When I click OK, I'll see that the two new fields have appeared in the list and they're now available as well to build my report items with. So there you go, some basic background information about shared data sources and shared data sets. If you want a little more information about how building a data set works, you can refer back to the video on embedded data sources and data sets. This one goes into a little more detail on how to use the query designer. It includes information about how to work with multiple data sets in the same report and how you join tables in a single data set. So use that one for reference if you want a little more information. Thanks for watching. See you next time.